Lamb Productions would like to thank you for your interest in viewing our list of home improvement and self-improvement videos. Lamb Productions has 11 videos on home improvement projects taught by professional instructors in their fields. We have three videos on ceramic tile instruction, tiling floors, tiling walls, and tiling countertops. Everything you need to know to have a successful tile installation is shown in full detail from proper layout to grouting. We also have a video on installing marble tiles, which includes an entryway, tiling over an existing fireplace enclosure, and other creative projects. Our video on Mexican Saltillo tile demonstrates tiling an outdoor patio, including the steps, and using decorative tile inserts. Our video on hardwood flooring shows how to install wood parquet tiles, and also plankwood flooring, both using the glue-down methods. Our video on glass blocks shows how to install glass blocks in a window area, it explains the different types of anchoring and spacers on the market, so you can decide which is best for your abilities. If you're thinking about wallpapering for the first time, our wallpaper video is a must. We show in detail gluing and handling the paper, layout procedures, stripping the old paper, papering around doors and casement windows, archways and overhead soffits, and hanging borders are all demonstrated. Our newest video, Full Finishing Decorating with Paint, shows the viewer 13 different techniques using paint to beautify your home. From sponge painting, rag rolling, combing, and everything in between is shown. A great and fast way to save time and money. Hello everybody, I'm Bruce Lamb. I want to thank you for your interest in the Utilic video series. We are now celebrating our 18th year in business, teaching homeowners like you how to install their own tile. In doing so, we're going to offer you a very special deal. For a limited time, we're going to have all six videos on a very special video called Tile It All. You can either get in VHS copies or DVD now. So get your Tile It All videos. It's going to have floors, walls, counters, the Satillo video, the marble video, and for a special deal, the hardwood floor, how to install hardwood floor plank and parquet flooring. All on one great video or DVD. That's right, folks. All six videos on one for only $10.95. That's right, $10.95. So call 1-800-495-8444 and get your all-in-one video right now, or DVD. Or you can also order online at www.tileitall.com. The following information is intended to help you understand the procedures for installing materials that are demonstrated. The information is intended for individuals who are familiar with hand and power tools. The producers of this video recommend that you check with your local building department for additional information that might be available on the project you are working on. Installing products over existing surfaces are only recommended if the surface is sound without movement. Ceramic tiles will crack if the surface you are installing it over moves. Concrete floors with existing cracks should be covered with a crack-resistant material, commonly referred to as slip sheet. Check with your local building center or tile dealer for the material available in your area. The producers disclaim any liability for injury or damage arising out of any failure or omission to perform the work or procedure shown. Your performance and installations are at your own risk. The following power tool should only be used by those who've had the proper training and are familiar with the power equipment being used. The first example of cutting tools is a wet saw. The wet saw cuts using a diamond chip blade and is water cooled. You can rent one of these saws in most rental yards and it's designed to cut all types of tile. It easily makes straight cuts, angle cuts, miter cuts and many other types. Hand cutting tools. There are several types of cutting tools for every tile. They range in price and size for your needs. These are just a few of the best and easiest to use on the market. They are all equipped with a carbide cutting wheel that scores the tile, then with a quick snap, they split the tile in two. Hand tools needed for tile. These are the basic tools you will need when tiling. The first tool is called a margin trowel. It is used for prying up tiles and mixing mortar. Here we are demonstrating the rod saw. The rod has small carbide chips attached to it, which allows you to saw through the tile. This works well with most softer tiles. The next tool you'll need is a notch trowel. The notches on the trowel come in different sizes to measure the correct amount of mortar to be applied to the surface for the type of tile you are using. Here we have the tile nippers. The cutting edge of the nippers have carbide teeth that are used to bite off small pieces of tile. 
Mark a line on the tile you need to trim and bite off the small pieces. Use only the edge of the nipper's teeth as shown for smoother cuts. For grouting, you will need a rubber grout float. This is used to spread the grout across the tile. You will also need a large grout sponge for cleaning your tile. The remaining tools you may already have, like a pencil, a paint measure, a chalk line for marking your working lines, and a carpenter's framing square and a long straight edge. You will also need a couple of large buckets, some rubber gloves, and good eye protection when cutting tile. The first job we'll show you is tiling over vinyl flooring. This is a recognized procedure by the Tile Council of America. It is also possible to tile over old ceramic tile, wood, and other surfaces using the following procedures. Ideally, removing these materials or covering badly cracked surfaces with a concrete backer board is recommended. These products are compressed Portland cement and expanded shale aggregates, sandwiched between polymer-coated glass fiber mesh reinforcement. They can easily be cut with this carbide tip scoring tool and a straight edge. Score along the straight edge and snap it the same way as you would do with drywall. For cutouts and holes, use a chisel to break through the fiberglass. Then with a hammer, break through the board. When installing Wonderboard over a wood subfloor, first spread a mixture of thin set mortar mixed with acrylic mortar admix over the wood surface. Place your Wonderboard over the mortar and fasten it down using either one and a half inch galvanized roofing nails or one and a quarter inch wafer head screws with corrosion resistant coating. Place the nail or screws every six to eight inches apart throughout the entire surface. The Wonderboard panel should be one eighth to three sixteenths of an inch apart. Using the grid layout method, Today, we'll be installing 8x8 tile using the grid layout method. A grid consists of a group of lines forming perfect squares which you will lay your tile within. To begin your layout of the tile, first measure and find the center point of the room. First in one direction, then in the other. Make a mark at these two intersecting lines. A grease pencil is excellent for marking on floors or tile. Now. Transfer these measurements on the floor in both directions and make your first set of chalk lines. Have a friend hold one end of the chalk line and snap your first line. Then make your second line going in the opposite direction. Using your framing square, check to make sure these intersecting lines are perfectly square. If they are not, move one of the lines until it is. Now we are ready to establish our layout. We will be spacing the 8x8 tiles with these plastic cross spacers. These spacers come in various sizes and shapes. The T-spacers on the right are used for rectangular tiles. Start placing your tiles along this line. The first tile will butt up against the center corner. Add your first spacer and place in the next tile. Continue adding your spacers and tile along this line until you come to the side walls of the room. As you can see, the layout leaves us with a small sliver cut in front of the cabinets and at the other side of the room. Most people prefer a larger cut instead of the sliver cut. To accomplish this, remove the first two tiles you placed in and take a tile and place it on the line so that the line is in the center of the tile. Then begin to replace the spacers and slide the rest of the tiles in place. Continue this procedure like before until you come to the two side walls. As you can see, this leaves you with a larger cut at both ends of the side walls. Most people prefer this layout over the smaller cuts. Now place your square and straight edge on the center tile and begin your layout in the opposite direction. Continue to set your plastic spacers in place until you reach the end. In some cases, you may need to make a cut here. Move the tile around until you have the desired layout. To establish your working grid, place three tiles on the floor with the spacers. Then add one quarter inch or the width of the spacers. This will give you the correct spacing for your grid layout. Make this mark right on your tape measure for easy reference. As you can see, our grid will be 24 and one quarter inches across. Make these marks at both sides of the room. You can now snap your first grid line. Now continue transferring these lines down both sides of the room. Be very careful and make sure your measurements are exact. If you're off a little, you'll have problems later. Double check your measurements often. Taking care now will pay off in the long run. You can now snap a couple of lines and get started with the tiling.
Using your spacers, start setting your tile for a dry run. The spacers will keep the layout square. Now, place your tape measure on the grid and measure the cut and the first two tiles. As you can see, it's 20 and 1 half inches. Transfer this measurement to the floor. This will be your first grid line in this new direction. Begin marking off the remaining grid lines at 24 and 1 quarter inches or every three tiles. You can now snap your first coarse grid line. We have decided to start running tile down this wall, then into the laundry room. We will then tile the laundry room and then back out. Now it's time to mix your thin set mortar. Mix the thin set mortar and acrylic mortar admix according to the directions so it spreads easily but has enough consistency so when you comb the mortar with the notch trowel the ridges will stand up and not slump. The notches on the trowel come in different sizes to measure the correct amount of mortar to be applied to the surface. Check the back of the custom thin set mortar bag or the acrylic mortar admix container to find the right size notch trowel for the type and size of tile you are using. Begin spreading the mortar with the flat side of the trowel. This is done to ensure you are getting good coverage. Next, go over the same area you just spread with the notch side of the trowel. Try not to push too hard and comb the area so it has the same thickness. Make sure the teeth of the trowel are just barely scraping the bottom. If you have too much mortar, scrape the excess off the trowel into the bucket. Make sure the area has the same thickness, being careful not to scrape off too much. Remember the notch size measures the correct amount of mortar for the job. Now it's time to begin setting your tile. Always place the first tile up against the corner so the chalk lines are showing. Then continue placing the remaining tiles, pushing firmly to set the tile into the mortar. Place your next three tiles along the chalk line, then the next three tiles. Try to set them approximately one quarter inch apart and as straight as possible. When these tiles are set, begin placing in your cross spacers. Make sure the tiles are seated properly and that each spacer is pressed into the mortar. Some people may want to leave the spacers in and grout over them. If you need to remove them, use an ice pick when the floor is set properly. Next, make your tile cuts and then begin placing these cuts into the mortar. Make sure you press them firmly and that they are set straight. If you have any mortar on the tile or oozing up through the joints, clean it off with your sponge at this time. Now you have completed your first grid successfully, so begin spreading your mortar into the adjoining grid. Try not to touch the tile you just set and don't cover up the chalk lines. Now continue placing more of your tile. Set your first tile on the line next to the tile you set previously. Then continue down the line, making sure each tile is straight and that the third tile is touching the chalk line at the corner. Place in the first spacer and then the next tile. Continue placing the spacers and adding more tile until you've completed this new grid as before. In this scene, we have laid some tile and spacers along the grid without mortar into the adjoining room. By doing this, we can start tiling in the far section of the room and then back out the doorway. Make sure your measurements are correct. Snap a new grid line with your chalk line and install your tile as before, including making your cuts and then setting them in at this time. Continue this process, spreading your thin set and adding your tile and spacers until you've backed out of the room and have joined the other tile. Here we have joined the original row of tile, spread the mortar, and are setting the tile in in the last three grids in this row. Now we are marking the tile for an L cut. Place the tile up against the wall and make a mark on both sides to be cut out. After joining these marks with straight lines, make the cut on your tile saw and place it in. Continue snapping your grid lines in both directions. Here you can see we are beginning to back out of the kitchen. We are spreading two grids across, setting our tile and spacers in as previously demonstrated. Before long, you'll be setting the last remaining grids. Remember to clean any excess mortar off the surface of the tile with your sponge and do not walk on the tile for at least 24 hours. Grouting your tile. Some floors may need to be sealed before you grout them. Check with your tile dealer for this information. Before you begin to grout, always use masking tape to protect the area around the grout job. Some grouts will stain any porous materials. Mix your grout with clean water so it has the consistency of whipped butter or thick frosting. Take your rubber float and begin pushing and pulling the grout across the tile diagonally while forcing it into the grout joints. Use your margin trowel to cut back and clean the edges of the tile so they have a sharp appearance. 
After the grout is set 10 to 15 minutes, you can begin to wash it off. Here to protect our clothing from getting soiled, we are using a piece of plywood to kneel on. Now, take your sponge and clean water and begin to loosen the grout on the surface of the tile. For the first wash, begin with a circular motion, loosening the grout as far as you can reach comfortably without pushing too hard. Next, rinse your sponge out for a second wash. You should only have enough water in your sponge so that it's filled but not dripping. Use one stroke at a time, then flip the sponge over and use the other side. When you pull the sponge on each side, rinse it out and repeat. Try to keep the joints as full as possible and use the sponge to make them uniform in size. Remember to change your water often. After you have finished grouting, wait for about an hour and dust off the film or haze left on the tile surface with a soft cloth. To keep your grout from common stains, you should apply a generous coat of sealant to the grout joints. Allow the grout to cure about 72 hours before you apply the sealant. It can be applied with a sponge or brush, and any excess sealant left on the tile surface should be removed with a soft cloth or paper towels.